In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with four different examples of the post base connection and how uh, some of the problems you might have with it or some of the benefits. Now, let's take a look at I have four different types of post base. I have one that's just buried in the dirt, one that would be buried in a concrete footing, something like a fence post, one that is sitting on top of a concrete footing but has large brackets to provide you with additional strength and then one which would be the most common with a standard base plate and this would be a column base maybe a CB44 that'd be a Simpson product this is probably the most common way that you would build a deck now the examples I'm providing you with here will be for a detached deck something that wouldn't be attached to a house a lot of times people try to get more strength by burying a post in concrete or burying it into the ground for a deck and there are other ways that you can strengthen it up um, strengthen the deck up laterally now this particular method here is not going to provide you with a lot of lateral support. In other words, if you built a deck um, like this, a four post deck, one post at each corner, um, I would imagine uh, it wouldn't take long before something like this would fall down. It would be extremely weak. It would need some type of bracing. And I'm actually going to make another video on how you can uh, use a variety of different braces or bracing systems to uh, make a deck a little stronger. This right here, just to give you a, a heads up, if I went ahead and poured a, let's just say a 20, 20 inch by 20 inch footing, I'm going overkill here, a 20 inch cube into the ground and put a CB44 column base plate like this in here and then attached a 4x4 with the bolts that the manufacturer recommends. I would imagine with, uh, you know, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but I would imagine I could actually break this post. I could pull on it hard enough to break it, um, and it would just split, and that would be gone. So if you could imagine the weight of a deck, something like this, so in other words, I would actually, if I built a deck like this that with a, um, let's go with a five foot post, I could probably build the deck, attach everything, and push on the deck hard enough to knock it over. And I'm not um, suggesting that it's highly probable, but I have actually seen decks like this that are not attached to a building. And you can go up and wiggle the deck. You can just grab it and, and move it. It is not uncommon. It is not the most um, structurally sound deck to do something like this. Now, if you bury a post in the ground, you're going to get a stronger deck. If you bury a post in concrete, I would imagine you're going to get even a stronger deck. But the problem is, and uh, this seems to be... Uh, a bigger problem than even I, like I said, uh, kind of imagine is that somehow, for some reason, I think people think that pressure treated wood doesn't rot. And that isn't always the case. Now, I don't know if they actually make a pressure treated lumber that is environmentally friendly and um, will hold up for a long period of time. I just I haven't ran across it. I've seen telephone poles um, rot. I've seen them. I've seen the termites tear them up, and uh, it's uh, it's just it's a myth. It's something that uh, I think we get stuck in our head. Oh, it's a seventy-year lumber. We can bury it in the ground, and I'm here to tell you that it just might not be. So if there's moisture in the ground, there's a good chance that the wood's going to rot. And that's just uh, the way it is. I mean, I have not came across something yet that uh, supports that in another way. So what about burying it in concrete? <clears throat> what about taking the post and burying it in a nice, solid concrete footing? 
to get the strength that you need. Okay, that might provide you with the strength you need, but as the concrete absorbs moisture out of the ground, out of the air, as it absorbs moisture, you could end up with a post that is starting to rot. Now, once this post rots and starts to uh, decay, or you might get some termite damage, um, well, you can say farewell to the deck. This will be it for your deck. It's not going to be holding up. If you have to imagine if you had two posts that were rotted, this thing is going to come. It's going to fall apart. So, and again, I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong here. I have seen so many different methods of construction last for years, but everything that I'm providing you with, the information I'm sharing with you is based off of my experience in the stuff that does work or seems to work the best or seems to provide us with the best alternative um, when it's time to repair this stuff. Now here's another method and I, I this is something that uh, I rarely run into. I don't think this is a product that most um, building hardware manufacturers make, but you could actually go and get it prefabbed at a metal, um, a place that uh, fabricates metal. I would imagine you wouldn't have a problem with that. Now something like this, if you're looking for some extra support, works great. Get a large piece of metal embedded into the concrete, uh, maybe a foot, two feet, have it come out about a foot or two. I mean, I'd imagine have to be out, out at least two feet to have something like this work. I've actually seen um, post, and with a 4x4, don't forget you could weaken it by cross drilling. You know, so if you put up, a, a, if you were to have a strap like this, you're not going to have a problem. But now, what if you put another strap because you're looking for some additional support on the other side? You know, so you would have one strap on each side of the post and then you would drill through it. If that's the case, you might want to go with a six by six. You might want to go with a post that's going to be a little stronger. And of course, six by sixes might be your best option for something like this anyway to provide you with a little more uh, stability. Let's go ahead and take a look at the most common method, which would be a, let's, okay, I, the only only the number I have, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. It's a Simpson CB44 column base. I don't recommend using a standoff post base, something that uh, isn't going to hold this thing down to the ground. Now, you can use the standoff base place, plates if your deck is connected to the building and you're not going to have a lot of lateral movement in either direction or you're going to use some type of a bracing system knock yourself out almost every deck i've ever built requires this type of a system um, something to where the concrete is a minimum distance of six inches from the ground from the soil and um, so it raises it up six inches and then i usually raise the building hardware, the CB44. I usually raise this about a quarter of an inch off of the concrete, just in case water pools up on the top here. It's not going to um, soak into the wood. So that's a, that's a, maybe that's another video I'll make. But uh, I think that makes sense. Raise this up just a little bit, or it wouldn't be a bad idea to just slope the edge of the footing down a little bit so that no water gets trapped there. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I am going to provide a link um, here at the end for how you could brace up a freestanding uh, deck or a port, something that would be freestanding, uh, provide you with a few other ways to um, structurally secure it, or at least uh, hopefully. So remember, some of these tips aren't going to work for you. If that's the case, wouldn't be a bad idea to contact a structural engineer in your area, someone who is familiar with your soil and, uh, of course, deck construction.